Great to see you. Glad that you're here today. And, um, you know, this is Palm Sunday. This is uh, the week, the greatest week in the life of the Christian who has faith in Jesus Christ. We, we march with Christ this week. We do remember the, um, the sadness, uh, the despair, the suffering that Jesus went through, like Maria sang about. But we also know that we're almost at the end of the victory march, that victory is close at hand. And we're going to talk about the beginning of that victory in just a minute this morning. Last week, we, we focused on Jesus' suffering upon the cross, uh, the, the hours that Jesus spent in anguish going to the cross and hanging there. And this week, we're, we're going to reflect on his death the hours leading up to his death, but then we're going to look at his death and how when Jesus died, the world changed forever that day. Our lives changed forever that day. And we need to remember that whether we've believed in Jesus for a long, long time or whether we're still contemplating and, and listening to the Spirit talk in your hearts about you accepting Christ as Lord and Savior. So we're going to look in the Gospel of Mark this morning, the 15th chapter, and I'm going to begin reading with the 33rd verse. Jesus has already been upon the cross for three hours, and now Mark records this. He says, at noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing nearby heard this, they said, listen, he's calling to Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene. Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, and of Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. This is the word of the Lord today. Well, Toby Mack has a song on Christian radio uh, that's still played pretty frequently, and, and it's titled, When Love Broke Through. It's a great song. It's an upbeat song. Uh, the song talks about a, a young person who's running hard in life with a thousand dreams on their mind and many other things of life on their mind. But the last thing on their mind is Jesus. The last thing on their mind is the cross. The last thing on their mind is salvation. But when this person hears about Jesus, when he hears about the cross and what it means, all of a sudden it says, love broke through their hearts. And the course ends up going like this. Toby Mac sings, when love broke through, you found me in the darkness. Wandering through the desert, I was a hopeless fool. Now I'm hopelessly devoted, my chains are broken, and it all began with you when love broke through. And it all began with you when love broke through. It's a wonderful song with a, uh, with a wonderful message. Uh, if we had some rappers in the um, praise team, we might could sing that, but I, I don't know if we have any rappers, so if, you, you know, if you're a good rapper, talk to Willard, and maybe he can, uh, he can include that in there. 
You know, when we look at those last three hours from noon to three that Jesus experiences on the cross, that's what, we, that's what I want you to see. I want you to see God's love breaking through. God's love breaking through all of the hate, all of the darkness, all of the sin, all that, that we struggle with in life. Jesus, on that cross, God's love breaks through. His death on the cross really prepares us for Easter morning coming up. And we need to look at the significance of his death and, and what it really means for each of us this morning. And to do that, we're going to look at three major events that happened during those three hours to remind us how and when love breaks through. First of all, Mark says, now, right before Jesus dies, as he, as he begins to yell out in anguish, darkness comes over the whole land. Darkness comes over the whole land. Now, many have said, well, gosh, that was God time that great. He caused this great eclipse to happen, and darkness came over the whole land. Well, it cannot be an eclipse. You know, we're, we're in the Passover. That's when Jesus dies. It's a full moon, and, and uh, just uh, the way that the solar system works, there's no eclipse that day. God, is somehow in his mysterious, omni, omnipowerful presence, just causes darkness to fall over the earth. Can you imagine the eerie feeling of, of those observing this crucifixion as in the middle of the day, it becomes dark? It's eerie enough maybe in the summertime when we're used to the bright sun day after day after day and all of a sudden we have one of those dark, gray, stormy days when the clouds come and it's so weird. We kind of see the sun trying to break through but it, it's those purple shadows everywhere. What an ominous feeling it must have been. Now in the Bible, darkness describes, it's usually a symbol for the absence of God. When, especially in the New Testament, when, when, we, when we hear about it being dark, and when we relate to the darkness of life and, and the darkness of our heart, it's the absence of God. It's when God is not there, there's no light that can penetrate our life and our heart and our world. And so Mark is saying that's what it's like. That's what Jesus is experiencing. That's what Jesus is doing. Jesus is taking on the darkness of the world, the darkness of the evil one, the darkness that's due to our sin, the darkness that separates us from God. And Mark shares with us that during these very moments from noon to three, Jesus is literally taking on the sin of you and I upon that cross. He's not taking on his sin. He's sinless. He's taking on what the men and the women and the boys and the girls were sinning at that very moment and every sin after that, and he's taking on your sin as well. And our sin are dark times, aren't they? This week reminds us of that. It's okay. It's okay to go there. We need to go there because this is what Jesus is doing. John uh, Calvin would say in the Reformation that God, this is a time when God just could not bear to look at his son upon the cross as sin is forever destroyed that day. And it's as he turns his back and he turns the light of God away from the world for those moments. Peter would later say in, in 1 Peter 2.24, the, the great follower of Christ, Peter said, he himself, speaking of Jesus, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed. That's what's happening in this very moment. But love is breaking through, even in the darkness, isn't it? 
Jesus feels the weight of the reality of sin. He feels that sin is separating us from the love of God. He feels that God cannot even watch upon, turn his head upon his son being crucified. And Mark says he yells out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he is really quoting scripture here. It's from the Passion Psalm, the 22nd Psalm. And, and we'll read that whole psalm in entirety on Thursday night before we walk out of here in silence, waiting for the Easter miracle to happen once again. And it's not a cry of Jesus because he feels abandoned by God, that God has left him. But it's a cry because in those moments with all that weight upon him, Jesus just feels alone. And he just feels abandoned on that cross. And I'm sure there's times in your life, haven't you just felt alone? Even though you have family, even though you have a loving family, a loving mom, a dad, a wife a husband, a child. Sometimes we just feel alone. There's some things in life we can only experience by ourselves, isn't it? Just, it's just that way. We've got to go through some things alone. Experiencing the cross is one of those things. And this ominous dark scene just shows the great expanse and the depth of God's love for each of you. It reminds us once again how far Jesus went to allow us to be forgiven and to have an eternal relationship with the Almighty. So whenever you're experiencing darkness in your life or if you think you're going through a dark time right now, and maybe you are, Maybe you're going for, through a shameful time of your life for whatever reason. Maybe you're in the midst of regret or there's some memory of something you've done in the past that has just captured you and made you prisoner inside of your life. I want you to know that this part of the story of the cross means that even in the midst of that darkness, God's light, God's love can penetrate any of that. John says in his gospel, in him, Jesus, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That's when love breaks through. Darkness cannot overcome what Jesus is doing right then. Mark goes on to say, after that cry, just moments later, uh, it's not his last words, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? His last words with his last breath as the Son of God in human form is a shout. It's a shout of victory. And Jesus shouts, and, and he gives up his spirit, and he dies. Another gospel says the shout is, it is finished. It is finished. It's not defeat, it's, it's victory. Now we're on the victory march. The pain is over, the suffering is over. And at that very moment, Mark says, the curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom, split in half. Think of a, of a drape in your house or, or um, a, a towel or something just ripped down the middle. This shout of victory is the completion of Jesus carrying out the will of the Father. And the curtain being torn in half, is it, it, it represents, and many of you know this from Sunday school class. Many of you know this from Bible study. But the curtain separated in the temple in Jerusalem uh, the people from the Holy of Holies. And only one person could go and go through that curtain, couldn't they? The high priest. And he only did it one time a year. And, and when he went through on that day of atonement, that one time a year, he would pray for the sins of all the people and hope God would grant forgiveness. The one person, the one prayer, the one time of the year. Mark wants us to know that, that when Jesus breathed his last, those days are gone forever. 
Jesus' death on the cross meant that not just one man has access to God, but every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, all mankind. That the way or path to a relationship with God is wide open now. It's for everyone, not just one person. Now, this is the good news. This is the victory. I love that one anthem the choir sings. I can't remember the title of it now, but it talks about the wideness of the, uh, uh, that heaven's gates are open wide. It's a beautiful image. It's the way to, the now that the way to God's heart in heaven, it's, it's not through keeping commandments and all that some people see the rules and regulations in the Bible. The way to God's heart is not living a moral life and never failing. The way to God's heart is not being good all the time. But the curtain being torn in Jesus' death means the cross has provided a different way. The way to salvation now is through grace. It's a free gift. The way to, the, to God's heart now is through faith. It's confessing and believing that Jesus has done this for your life. The way to eternal forgiveness is available not once a year, but it's available to you every day, every minute, every second. All it is is an asking of Christ to forgive you because of what he's done. Love broke through, and hope showed up forever. And then we have one more event that happens after all of this takes place, and everybody looks around, and it's a significant event. It's a centurion making a statement of faith at the foot of the cross, isn't it? Wow, why did Mark put that in there? It, but well, one reason he wanted us to know it didn't take long for this wide open path to God to be taken advantage of, did it? Seconds, minutes. The head of the centurion guard, the, the hardened sergeant major, career soldier who had seen hundreds of people die. Somehow in this death, he was moved and he was amazed at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. And with this somewhat small detail in the enormous telling of the cross, Mark shares a huge truth of the impact of Jesus' death. And that truth is that each of us look at Jesus' life each of us here look at his death and, and his resurrection. And each of us here, like that Roman centurion, has to make a personal decision about the Son of God. The centurion's statement shows that anyone, even one who is far, far away from God, can be drawn to him by the power of what Jesus did for you on the cross. The impressive part of this man's confession is several things. First of all, this Roman soldier was, was able to change his mind about Jesus based on what he was experiencing at the cross. Just hours before, he had been one of the guards who was spitting on Jesus, who was beating him, who was humiliating him. Now he believes He kept an open mind about Christ. He kept an open mind about faith. He kept an open mind about salvation. It's so easy for us in our world today to become closed-minded and for our hearts to harden to the gospel year after year after year, where pretty soon some just don't believe it at all. But this man was able to remain open-minded and he was changed by the love of Jesus on the cross. And this is the confession. Jesus is the Son of God that will change the world, isn't it? And it has changed the world. And ironically, the first person who makes this profession, this confession of Jesus as the Son of God, it's not the high priest. It's not a leading rabbi or teacher. It's not even one of the 12 loyal disciples that's followed Jesus for three years. It's not even the group of, of, 
of loving women who are surrounding the cross, who've taken care of him. It was made by a thug who was used to killing human beings as easy as swatting flies. That's the first sane person in this world that recognizes Jesus for who he is. And Mark sends a signal to the world that a new era has begun, that God's kingdom of love and grace and forgiveness is now, that his grace is free for the taking. And you know, since that day, millions upon millions have made that same discovery. Millions upon millions have come to salvation through faith alone. And so we bring it back to this day. We bring it back to this congregation. We bring it back to each of you individually today. Have you been moved by the cross? Have you been changed? Have have you allowed Christ's love for you to break through to your heart? The story is told of a young boy once accompanied by his mother to worship. And during the sermon, the boy was listening very attentively to the lesson that day. And the preacher's sermon on the crucifixion of Christ was so moving that the boy began to weep. And soon he began to cry out loud. And and you young moms can understand this. His mom became so embarrassed that she turned, leaned over and whispered at him, Don't take it so seriously. You know, in that cute story, though, when the Holy Spirit stirs your heart and when the cross of Jesus begins to break through your life, you need to take it serious. Don't push away the urging of the Spirit. Don't push away the love of Jesus. Let it break through. Because we're talking You know, we're we're talking about eternity with God here. (laughs) We're talking about experiencing God's love forever. The day when love broke through. What an amazing story. What an amazing God. Has love broken through to your heart? I, I look around and, and I think I see believers, but I just don't know every heart. But God does. God does. Have you asked and made that confession that the soldier made? Jesus, you're the son of God. Jesus, I sin. Jesus, I need you to come into my heart and forgive me for what you've done on the cross. That's the Easter story. That's the story of this Passion Week that we're entering. If you know Jesus, then you find somebody that doesn't know him or needs to get here, and you get them here next Sunday for Easter. You take that invitation card and you bring them because we'll share the great story of Easter pretty plain next week. You know, it's like Christmas. You tell the story of the birth of Jesus, and next week we're going to tell the resurrection story again. And we're going to let everybody know exactly what they need to do to get to heaven. And that's, that's eternal business. Our praise team's going to come back up in just a minute. I'm going to have a prayer. And we're going to sing a song just to praise God for what he's done for us. And, um, you know, maybe Jesus is speaking to your heart this morning. And um, I'll be over here just praising and singing um, singing this great hymn of faith, but if you need to talk to me about asking Christ in your heart, you, you, you come and do that while we sing or afterwards because I want to talk to you. Well, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, um, we all here together just pray with me and thank you that your love broke through our darkness 2,000 years ago on that cross. We praise you, Lord. And we all accept freely the salvation you've given us. And God, if there's a heart here that that just needs to do that for the first time right now, break through their heart. And may they know your salvation and the freedom from your grace. In your name we pray. Amen.